Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Having a Port. I'm Brad Mines, your host. There is approximately 82 days left until the next Bitcoin halving occurs. The price of Bitcoin is 9,587 US dollars, timestamped at 12:22 a.m. February 20th, 2020. I'm happy to introduce Fly Tie MMA back on the show again as our Bernie Sanders campaign and U.S. election correspondent. Got in uh, back of the house. Just got back in from the debate party, so I'm glad I got my account back. I don't know what that was about, but man, that's pretty crazy debate, huh? Yeah, man. How was the uh, the sentiment at the debate party? Ooh, we was having a good time. Cause we pretty much was, was laughing because it was all our, all of uh, our opponents were taking each other out, right? <laughs> and that's what I was talking about. I wanted I wanted Bloomberg to be the our number one competitor because you see how everyone went after him. It was a he's an easy target. So we're going to see how his number is affected after this debate, but he, he took a beating tonight, absolute beating, and he didn't, ha- he didn't handle it well. He wasn't charismatic, and he didn't really have an answer to, like, even the accusations that Biden was throwing at him. What do you think the more impactful statements that were made towards him, which ones stood out to you? Okay. The most powerful statements is the attack of substance. Bernie had a great attack because he went after Bloomberg for pushing regressive taxes. And that when Bernie also attacked Bloomberg for endorsing George Bush and pushing the Iraq war. But Elizabeth Warren actually had a, a very powerful attack on him as well. And it was trending on Twitter, the NDAs, where Warren, she called Bloomberg out for the NDAs. Uh, but Warren was attacking Bloomberg on his NDAs for all the sexual harassment potential cases because there's all these women that require called NDAs. And, and Bloomberg, when he was asked by Warren, pressed him on it, and he didn't have an answer. He was like, yeah, I think one of those NDAs, because I said a dirty joke. And when he said that, the crowd did not like that. He, he, that the crowd pushed back and booed on him, so... Uh, Bernie had a pretty powerful stack of substance against Bloomberg, and then Warren called out his NDAs. Those sexual harassment claims, do they have any merit, do you think? That's that's why the attack that Warren laid out was strong, because we don't even know that, because he got the NDAs on him, just like Trump. So Trump is known for using NDAs to suppress uh, any sexual harassment allegations. So now we in a race against Donald Trump, and she pointed out how, hey, you got NDAs just like Donald Trump does. If you did nothing wrong, let the women speak. And and she, I love how she used she like muffled Bloomberg and muffling his victims by having the NDA. So if you did nothing wrong, why you have NDA out? And I think after the Me Too movement, and especially if you don't run for public office, NDA is, is going to be one of the things that will be considered a thing of the past. And you, I guess you can legally have them, but you can't expect to be able to run for office or to develop goodwill if you got NDAs out there. So that I think that attack it was really strong for Warren, and she usually was pretty gloves off uh, before. Like if you look at her tweets and how she attacked, she haven't laid a glove on Bloomberg or, or Biden recently, but she was out there attacking everybody because uh, her, her campaign is desperate, and she's in a must-win situation coming in Nevada even though she underperformed New Hampshire, so... I think when eventually she drops out, she's going to have to endorse either a centrist or do you think there's a chance that she's going to endorse Bernie Sanders still? She surprised me because I was, I'm was i still sure and I'm, I'm still leaning that she might endorse Klobuchar because she kind of dropped, like, policy from her for her platform. She's focusing on the identity politics. Uh, she said she want to, hey, I'm, I'm a woman and... That's how she's been repeating. She's been praising Klobuchar a lot. So I was surprised because she's actually went after Klobuchar a few times. It seems like she realized going after Bernie wasn't helping. It was hurting her. So she she made a like a, a few snide remarks towards Bernie. But when the moderator asked Warren, she pretty, the moderator teed up an attack question on Warren on, on Bernie, and and she it was about the medical records, and she it was she kind of pivoted and attacked Bloomberg. Um, so you can see it was a coordinated strategy for Warren to go after, um, Klobuchar and Bloomberg, which obviously surprises me because she, she was pretty hands off on both of them, uh, coming into this debate. So you know that she has, uh, some strategy that she's trying to execute tonight to vote, avoid Bernie. You may be able to snipe at him maybe once in a while, but you don't want to get into a, an actual conversation with him. 
So that, we, that what we saw for Warren, and that's why a lot, of, a lot of people who are centrist minded are calling her a winner. Which honestly, I'm not going to fight too much, but I think she don't have a viable path to the nomination. Did you think Bloomberg did any damage to the Sanders campaign when he called him a communist? <laughs> it's funny because I had a friend and we was at the rock party and he said uh, he was reading off a drinking game. I think he was he was getting it from some news outlet. I forgot I forgot exactly what source it was, um, but it was like here's a drinking game. He was listening to all these things like Pete platitudes, and they said one of the ones at the very at the very end was uh, take a drink if uh, one of uh, Bernie Sanders' opponents call him a communist. <laughs> so actually, because because we talked about that before when when Bloomberg called Bernie a communist. Everyone at the debate watch party just kind of laughed. We're like, yeah, take a drink. <laughs> we knew that someone <laughs> would take the bait. And when, so when it happened, Bernie obviously slapped it down. And it, I think that's not going to hurt Sanders' campaign because Bloom, Bloomberg pretty much took a beating at the debate tonight. And uh, one of the later questions they asked was going all through the candidates and asking if they think if the candidate with the most delegates should win. With Bernie Sanders, well, do you think he'll have enough delegates? I'll see how anything that happens in the debate, there are two big stories. The first big story is Michael Bloomberg tanking really bad. The second story is all the candidates outside of Bernie Sanders saying that they are willing to steal the nomination. And that's I, that's in my opinion, in my in my perfect media landscape, that would be the headlines everywhere, right? You have Bloomberg destroyed, and you have Democratic nominees are anti democracy. Because apparently what they what they're saying is they want Bernie Sanders can win the popular vote, but they want to play the process, which means super delegates can pick Michael Bloomberg or pick Joe Biden or pick Pete Buttigieg, even though Bernie Sanders will win the popular vote. Now, that's a giant, in my opinion, scandal, right? How do you think you'd be able to defeat Donald Trump in the Electoral College if you can't defeat, uh, uh, you can't win a Democratic nominee with the popular vote? So it, you can see that they're not 100% serious at defeating Trump. Their goal is to defeat Sanders. <laughs> so knowing if you go into a general election and you got a less popular vote after complaining about Hillary losing the popular vote, you know your number one plan is to stop Sanders. You would, you would, you would piss off the entire left flank of your party. You would suppress the vote, and you would lose to Trump 100% if you do that. But every every candidate except Bernie Sanders said that they don't support the the process as it is now, which is one super delegate. So we, is that that was the biggest second. That was probably the biggest story of the debate tonight. Is the fact that they openly said that. So. And I don't, I don't be um, talking about that a lot because that's a huge development that I don't think a lot of people are going to talk about. I think it's huge that they said that and they they open about that. So the process was that you have if, if a candidate doesn't hit fifty percent of the delegate delegate count, the super uh, the super delegates will vote and pick a nominee, kind of, right? So the question was that just like, do you support that system or will you support the candidate with the most black black delegates? And literally. Oh. I'm saying that, hey, even if Bernie gets the most players delegates, we're going to follow the system, which means the super delegates take Bloomberg, they will all fall in line. And they literally just admitted that. And and Bernie Sanders is the only one like, no, 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 I wouldn't, I'm not doing that. <laughs> that. That's not how we're supposed to do that. That's not democracy. So you had a candidate full of people who complained about Russia. You have a candidate full of people who complained about Hillary Clinton winning the popular vote, vote by 3 million people. But they want to go against Donald Trump after losing the popular vote in the Democratic Party nomination. That is insanity. That's a horrific strategy in every sense. In every sense, pretty much, you're going to, you're going to suppress the vote. You're getting a lot of people frustrated, and you're going to lose to Trump because you got to beat Trump in the electoral college. So it is a horrific strategy for the Democrats. You can tell that they they just want to stop Sanders. The debate tonight with that sound clip, I don't think they realized how bad they were exposed by that. To me, that, as soon as that happened, that was the biggest story of the night. So that's huge. Definitely some interesting stuff to think about here. So, so does the campaign have an answer to the super delegates then? Oh, yeah. There's going to be massive mobilization. So if, if Sanders come in with the most delegates, even if they do the second round votes, we're going to look at them and we're going to dare the super delegates to do something stupid. We know they will, but if they will, they're going to be massive action. And they don't, I don't think they want to take that path. And it seems like, based on their answer, they're ready to, take, to fight us. They're, they're, they're literally gearing up to fight at the, the convention 
Like I said, I'm going to go to Milwaukee. I'm going to do the best I can. I did pretty good in fundraising, which is great. I mean, I'd be able to uh, potentially go to Milwaukee where the convention is at. We're going to need as many people as possible because they pretty much just kind of put it out there. Like they're going to um, try to use super delegates to defeat Sanders because they know the, the writing is on the wall. Um, and they know the chances of, honestly, of, of a candy game, one fifty percent is rough. But hey, you never know. What if we win California and we're the only people, a candidate that qualified for delegates? You know, well, we win Texas and we're the only candidate that qualified for delegates. It's possible, but we got to be ready for worst case scenario. So that's, that's why I stand. All right. Well, thanks for giving your commentary on the Vegas debate. What's the plan? You're still knocking on doors in South Carolina until the primary? Yeah, man. We're going to be hitting it hard in the next few days. I was talking to my field captain, Gregory. He's known as uh, Comrade Card on, on Twitter. That's at Comrade uh, Card and he's been running the field operation of Buford and our goal is we did be knocking on a ton of doors in the next five six days and then when Wednesday come we done pretty much shift on trying to get the vote out so we put we had a hit, huge day today we were we knocked on over 100 doors easily we had a lot of great conversations I posted I post some updates on my feed that you guys can check out under the hashtag uh, uh, road to South Carolina road to SD because um, I put some big pictures of what I did today and we're going to be working hard to close out the the campaign, but I'm gonna let you guys know that morale is extremely high at South Carolina right now, especially because we had a poll that I was celebrating that showed us effectively tied with Joe Biden. And now we got a strong debate performance from Bernie. We're knocking on a lot of doors today, got a lot of undecided voters. So we're very excited about like our position right now. From my perspective, I do see a lot of momentum carrying with the Bernie's campaign. I'm going to leave it to you if you want to say anything else about the debate or anything else uh, or any impactful conversations you had. No, nah, man, I appreciate you having me on because it's good to share these thoughts I have. I was pretty much talking to a lot of people at the office about the debate and the ramifications. I think my final overall breakdown of the debates and the winners, um, I honestly, this is probably the first time I ever say it. I do think uh, Joe Biden kind of won the debate tonight because Bloomberg took such a beating. Sanders obviously won because he had a lot of great jabs against Bloomberg. And the more they tear down Bloomberg, that kind of pro- promote Bernie's idea. So if I had to pick three winners, obviously, I think it would be Warren, Biden, and Sanders, obviously. Just because Warren seemed tough, but I don't think she has a viable passion nomination. Bernie had a good night because he, he made a good case for his platform and he attacked Bloomberg. And then you have uh, Joe Biden that because Bloomberg was attacked, usually it was Biden that was getting body bagged at these the debates. He actually wasn't. He had his few attacks. He did on Bloomberg. He went out to Bernie one time, but it wasn't too long. So those would be my three winners. And obviously the losers is uh, Bloomberg. And I think Mayor Pete lost as well because uh, we see his exchange he had with Klobuchar. He's fighting his own base. He's not going to win us over huh? by taking out Klobuchar. But he's going to lose the potential moderate voters that might go for Klobuchar. Or it might be vice versa. It could easily be vice versa. Um, so I think they're the big losers. Bernie won because he had an exchange with Pete, and I think he made Pete w- look weak because Pete didn't really have an answer to Bernie's quip. Like they were, like Bernie, like he would talk. They would talk about. I think he had an amateur move. They would talk about his medical records. He he switched the conversation to. Uh, he left a, a a situation with Bernie was vulnerable on, and went after healthcare, and that plan rides with Bernie's strength. Voters think Bernie is the most trusted on healthcare, so. I think Bernie did well in that stand, so I, I think my winners would be Bernie, Biden, and Warren. And I think our losers, obviously, Bloomberg and Mayor Pete. And Klobuchar, which is Klobuchar, I don't think nothing's going to change uh, for her. So that would be my final overall like breakdown of the debate. And I don't know if I forgot anyone, but if I did forget someone, it's because they didn't have a good night. I'm pretty sure I covered everyone. <laughs> so if I didn't mention them, just know they didn't have a good night, because obviously they were pretty forgetful. Like I said, appreciate you having me on, and let me keep giving you guys some updates because we'll just be doing lines of work for the rest of the election. Here. Okay, well, you heard it here. It's Bernie, Biden, and Warren are the winners from uh, Fly Tie MMA. Thanks for joining me, Nick, and I do hope to hear from you on the next updates in the U.S. election. Thank you. Yeah, the 2020 good, Nevada you. Democratic Caucuses are this Saturday, February 22nd. Thanks for tuning in to Episode 12 of The Having Report. 